Magnetism in Rocks. In this video we're going to look at how scientists use the direction of magnetism in rocks to help prove the theory of continental drift. To understand that process we first must look at how rocks can exhibit magnetism in the first place and to do that we're going to look at how rocks are produced. We're going to take the example of a seafloor spreading tectonic plate boundary. Between the two tectonic plates there's a gap and into that gap some molten magma is going to rise. As it meets the sea, which is much cooler, it's going to solidify. So the plates spread apart and then filling in the gaps some new tectonic plate is formed and those tectonic plates will then slide apart again and some additional tectonic plate will be produced. In addition to that we need to realize that the Earth's magnetic field switches direction between every hundred thousand to a million years. So this is what it would look like normally. Then every hundred thousand to a million years the magnetic field reverses in direction. So those two things are the key pieces of information. New rock is formed when molten rock solidifies and the Earth's magnetic field switches direction every 100,000 to a million years. We're now going to take one of those plates and look at it in a little bit more detail. As the new rock forms on the edge of the tectonic plate, particles inside the rock called magnetite, which are basically particles that contain iron, align themselves in the same direction as the Earth's magnetic field. So iron is a magnetic metal. When it's molten, those particles are lined up with the magnetic field. So when the rock solidifies, those particles are fixed, pointing in that direction, the same direction as the magnetic field. What then happens is, about 100,000 years later maybe, the Earth's magnetic field switches in direction. So the next bit of rock that is made is going to exhibit magnetism in the opposite direction, because those magnetite particles are now aligned in the opposite way with the current magnetic field. And that process continues. So you get bands of rock forming that show the magnetism in alternating directions as the Earth's magnetic field switches. So here we go, you get these bands of the magnetite aligning itself in opposite directions. So the question we now need to think about is how scientists can use the direction of magnetism to help prove continental drift here we have two continents and the direction of magnetism in the rocks that make up these continents is shown on the diagram here. What we can do is we know that rocks that were formed at the same time will have magnetism pointing in the same direction. So if we were to move the continent of Africa back to where we think it originally was, we can see that the magnetism in the rocks in both halves of the continent have the same direction. Because the direction of magnetism inside the rocks is the same in Africa and South America when they are aligned properly, we can tell that both continents were formed at the same time and must have originally been connected as one supercontinent. And over time they've drifted and reverted to these two positions. 